Kia ora tato. In this video we'll keep looking at electron configurations. Um, so just a quick revision of what we did in the last video. If we've got the periodic table there, um, we've got the different suborbitals. So we had the 1s orbital, which covered the hydrogen and helium atoms. And then we had 2s, which is for lithium and beryllium. 2p, which is for this side of the periodic table. 3s, which is for there. 3p, which is for over here. Um, 3d and this is where it kind of skipped a little bit so the 3d was for that section of the periodic table whereas the 4s kind of went backwards and then took up the potassium and calcium parts and then 4p and this is the maximum of where we'll get up to is is this section there um, and then it would be 4d and so on um, so and we learned that we would um, fill up the orbitals by doing little diagonal arrows. So if we were filling up the um, the subshells of argon, um, we could have argon like that, we would fill up 1s first, 1s2, um, then it would be 2s2, 2s2, 2p6, um, and then 3s2. So, so far we're up to this part of the periodic table here and then we just need six one two three four five six more electrons which will go into the three p shell so we're not actually going to need to go into the four s so three p uh six if we were to um let's take scandium if we were to take scandium and do the electron configuration of that um we would draw that as s c uh one s two 2s2, um, 2p6, sorry, going as quick as I can, 3s2, but you're getting the idea that it takes quite a while to just keep drawing it out. Then we're going to go 4s2, and this is where we need to skip ahead a little bit, and then 3d1. So every time we draw any elements in this section of the periodic table, we're having to fill up the same part of the electron configuration that argon has already taken up. So we can actually draw this um, any of the elements in this section of the periodic table here in the 3d 4p 4s section by using argon as kind of the base. So we could actually draw the scandium um, electron configuration like this where we draw in square brackets argon and that tells us that we're using up all of this section of it here that relates to the electron configuration of argon and then we can just write what comes after that so we would put 3d1 4s2 so if you were to draw it that way that would still be correct but this way just saves you a lot of time you saw how long it took me to draw that the electron configuration of argon out before um, so there are two exceptions with our normal counting rule and those are chromium and copper and we just need to remember these so chromium is number 24 there so if we were to draw the electron configuration of chromium I would just go argon argon so we've used up all of that section of it and then we just need the 4s2 and then 3d1234 so how we would draw it with our normal logic is we would put 4s2 3d4 but what happens in reality is that um, it's more stable, um, so using that word stability, atoms are more likely to move into a stable state, um, if we've got this d suborbital half filled. So the way we would actually write it is that we'll put five electrons into the d orbital, and then that just leaves us one electron to go into the s orbital. So we've still used up the correct amount of electrons, we've still used up 24 electrons with um, uh, 18 of them going into the argon um, uh, electron configuration and then the 6 going into here but it's just slightly different from the rules that we've used before and copper is relatively similar so copper we would um, using our normal logic would draw it like argon and then we'd have 4s2 and that would leave us 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 so 3d nine electrons to go into the d shell but it's actually more kind of similar to this it's more stable to have a full d shell um, and a half fill 
S shell than it is to have it the way that we'd drawn it before. So we'd go 3D10 for S1. So we don't need to know why that is, we just need to remember that that's the case. Um, the reason is it's just, it is more stable um, to have a full D shell and a half filled D shell than a nearly half filled D shell and a nearly full D shell plus a full S shell. Um, yeah. So let's move on to the next part. So ions. Um, so this is a slightly, so when we've got a positive ion, so any ion in the um, transition elements, we lose electrons. Yeah. So we, we learnt that um, in year 11. So let's take the iron ion, for example, it can form a two plus or a three plus ion. So if, e, if we just do the electron configuration of the ion atom, we're going to have argon, the argon shorthand, and then we're going to have 3d, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3d, 6, 4, s, 2. So when we're filling this up to do the atom, we fill up the s shell first, and then we, we start filling the d shell. When we um, are talking about an ion, so let's say we take the ion 3 plus, we actually remove electrons from the s shell first. So a, uh, so it would be incorrect to remove the electrons from the d shell first. So to go 3d3, 4s, 2, that would be incorrect. Even though that's the way we filled it, that's not the way we then remove electrons. So let's do it properly. Um, so we're going to remove three electrons, first of all two electrons from the s um, suborbital and then one more electron from the d orbital. So it's going to be 3d5, 3d5, 4s, 1. That would be the ion 3 plus. <clears throat> Let's do one more if we do nickel. So the nickel atom would have a an electron arrangement of that argon uh, shorthand and then 3d8. 4s2 and then we form nickel forms a 2 plus ion so that is simply going to be AR and we're going to remove those S um, that S suborbital that's two electrons gone and so it's just going to be 3d8 simple as that thanks very much for watching we'll have a look at electron spin in the next video cheers